Are you a fan of Thomas Sowell? Uh, I, I wouldn't call myself a fan. Is, can you be a fan of? I mean, I, I know his work. You know his work. Yeah. Do you respect his work? I think it's interesting. I think there's a lot of interesting hypotheses out there, and I, I have never met him and, and don't know him personally. Um, I, I, I like, um, I think the, the difference between some of the stuff that Soul has done and what's being done now is what's being done now has a lot more rigor to it. And we're really interested in causality and really interested in specifically pinpointing what's going on. What, what Thomas Soul has done, which is uh, really interesting, in my opinion, is generated a lot of hypotheses that we can test. And he's got a lot of ideas and there's a lot of um, things out there, but, but um, it's, not, it's not the level of rigor I would want it. Who were some of the economists you admire? Because for somebody to become an economist, you, you almost have to have a few economists you look at and say, you know, because you start off reading other people's, yeah. right? So who were some of the economists you studied? Well, that's not how I became an economist, but um, but there are economists I admire. So which one do you want? Now, give me the second one. <laughs> All right. Um, Glenn Lowry is an economist I admire. Steve Levitt's an economist I admire. Gary Becker is an economist I admire. Milton Friedman's an economist I admire. Samuelson, there, there's plenty um, that, uh, that, that are phenomenal, phenomenal thinkers. Ken Arrow is another one. Matt Jackson, uh, who really brought networks to, to economics, is another one. So why Milton Friedman but not Sowell? Because Milton was dealing with, um, I mean, he's... Uh, fundamental issues of price theory. I mean, these were, these were field changing. Um, Soul, again, it, zero disrespect. It, it, is, it, is a, it was a different time when he was studying these things, right? Um, you know, looking at the outcomes of immigrants versus the outcomes of uh, uh, American, black Americans born here. An interesting hypothesis, but there's a lot more uh, that can potentially explain those differences than just immigration status alone. And so I just want to keep take those hypotheses, dig deeper, be more rigorous. That's all. Milton, I have a painting in my house and the painting in my house has eight people in it. OK. And <clears throat> Rob, if you can get that video ready, maybe show the painting first. Zoom in a little bit into the painting. It's called Dead Mentors. Okay, it's a pretty mm. bad name, but I'm not trying to resell it. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, zoom in. Uh, it's actually what is that? Who the hell it? made somebody, that? Was that Cristiano Ronaldo? <laughs> you're so oh, funny. Look at your picture on the left. No, no, no mafia somebody took that and changed it. No, somebody <laughs> took that and changed it to oh something else, and they're selling it. Rob, oh. can you just go to the original one? Don't worry. Zoom in. So you got Einstein, Kennedy, Lincoln, Tupac, myself in the middle, blue JFK. suit. Uh, uh, right, JFK, Ayrton Senna, the Shah of Iran, MLK. And Milton Friedman, hmm. right? And an empty chair. Right. And they're debating in the vault two books, Communist Manifesto and Atlas Shrug is what hmm. they're debating. Hmm. That's what's in my brain. This is hmm. why I'm naturally high. I'm, I, I have issues. <laughs> and that's why I have you here. You don't even know why I have you here. Can you play this clip by Milton Friedman? Uh, have you ever seen a Milton Friedman interview with Phil Donahue? I don't think so. Maybe. Uh, by the way, if you haven't, this is, this is the era of Nader. Ralph Nader Ralph and Nader. Yeah, so oh, all yeah. this stuff. Yeah, and yeah. this was one of the sickest interviews. Vinny, have you ever seen this whole thing? I, no, I saw a clip. I think you showed me a while ago, this but I've never seen it. This is a must-watch the How entire thing. Uh, I'm, I'm okay. just giving you the two-minute okay. clip. Okay. Okay. So here, that. you know, uh, uh, Phil, obviously a left socialist, you know, Democrat is how he would uh, portray himself. And he's talking about the greed of the wealth. Go ahead. When you see around the globe the maldistribution of wealth, the, the desperate plight of millions of people in underdeveloped countries, uh, when you see so few haves and so many have-nots, when you, when you see the greed and the concentration of power within, don't, aren't you ever, did you ever have a moment of doubt about capitalism and whether greed's a good idea to run on? Well, first of all, tell me, is there some society you know that doesn't run on greed? You think Russia doesn't run on greed? You think China doesn't run on greed? What is greed? Of course, none of us are greedy. It's only the other fellow who's greedy. Yeah, good point. This, the world runs on individuals pursuing their separate interests. The great achievements of civilization have not come from government bureaus. Einstein didn't construct his theory under order from a, from a, a bureaucrat. Henry Ford didn't revolutionize the automobile industry that way. In the only cases in which the masses have escaped from the kind of grinding poverty you're talking about, the only cases in recorded history are where they, where they have had capitalism and largely free trade. 
If you want to know where the masses are worse, worse off, worst off, it's exactly in the kinds of societies that depart from that. So that the record of history is absolutely crystal clear that there is no alternative way so far discovered of improving the lot of the ordinary people that can hold a candle to the productive activities that are unleashed by a free enterprise system. But it seems to reward not virtue as much as ability to manipulate the system. Uh, and what does reward virtue? You think the uh, communist commissar rewards virtue? You think a Hitler rewards virtue? You think, excuse me, if you'll pardon me, do you think American presidents reward virtue? Wow. Do they choose their appointees on the basis of the virtue of the people appointed or on the basis of their political clout? Is it really true that political self-interest is nobler somehow than economic self-interest? You know, I think you're taking a lot of things for granted. And just tell me where in the world you find these angels <laughs> That's who so are going to organize fun. society for us. Well, I don't even trust you to do that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. uh, it's one of the best oh, clips. How long, is, how long is the whole interview? 43 minutes. I'm going to watch I'm it. telling you I'm it's a clinic. That's on. Sick. By the time you're done, you, you're you going to get as close as being a, 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 as good of an economist as Roland is. Like, like yeah, Bidenomics yeah. type? No, economy? no, no. Not, not that good? Kind of economy, okay. but and if you work hard, we'll let you in. Thank you. Okay, <laughs> cool. No, but this is, this is the kind of reasoning of, of why I, um, five years ago, started a venture capital company because I was worried about the impact that academics can have in the world and and it, it is we didn't talk about it as part of the police police work but um, you know after that work had meetings with Obama and other people in the White House and we got nothing done meaning not, not a, you know we did research it was people talked about it a while but we got nothing done and on the other hand uh, a really good friend of mine, was uh, an investor in early stage ventures, and he was partnering with people who were truly changing the world through effort, mm -hmm. right? And and I thought, how would Milton Friedman approach this? Would he would he start th going out and fundraising with philanthropy and trying to put things out and hoping the the government would adopt it? No way. So we started this little uh, venture capital company to do exactly this: to 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 invest in people and ideas that accelerate things that. Research has showed will increase social mobility. So I'm all about using the market to uh, accelerate the changes we've been talking about around around this table. I mean, when I was a kid, I was taught capitalism was the problem. As an adult, I think it's the answer. Wow. Did you ever read Capitalism and Slavery? No. No. I had a guy in my life. I feel like I'm getting a lot of homework. I'm the professor. <laughs> <laughs> I know. You got to <laughs> No, no, no. Uh, I'm the uneducated uh, economist. Is, uh, is, uh, I'm, I'm just very curious about this entire space. And a lot of it is because of my upbringing, who was my, you know, my parents, communists, imperialists, you know, benefits of communism, benefits of socialism. And then you're like, wait a minute, what benefits of communism? This book right here, Capitalism and Slavery, was given to me years ago and it, hmm. by Eric Williams. And hmm. it talked about how uh, capitalists uh, did all bad to, you know, blacks and slaves and all this stuff. But um, I can no longer remain in today's Democratic Party. Tulsi Gabbard says she is no longer a Democrat. A potential Tulsi Gabbard VP. Where we are being told that we just have to comply and go along with whatever they say. American people uh, are smarter than this. However, we must remain vigilant to recognize their propaganda for what it is, pure lie. Unfortunately, we live in a time where free speech is under attack. Whatever they say goes, and we, we have to just fall. And the people who suffered under your reign as prosecutor, you owe them an apology. Taking on Kamala Harris on a debate stage before, I would look forward to doing that again. So if you like this clip and you want to watch another one, click right here. And if you want to watch the entire podcast, click right here.